Hi guys, today I want to talk about the international eight ball rules which are being used on the newly formed uh, Ultimate Pool and their new show. Now those of you that have been following the sport for a while will know that these rules have actually been around for a number of years uh, under a different name of Supreme Rules. Um, they have been rebranded for the launch of Ultimate Pool uh, to international eight ball rules and I think that was a, a really good nap name considering that these rules have been played or are being played uh, so widely around the world, uh, specifically in America and China, where it, it is the main rule set for eight ball. Um, the only real differences between the, the, those rules and these rules are the balls uh, and the size of the table they're playing on. The actual rules themselves are, are very, very similar, probably only the jump shot being the main difference. Um, now, the purpose of this video is just to highlight some of the rules and some of the key fundamentals of the rule set, but in my opinion, this this rule set is probably the simplest rule set to learn, especially for a beginner. Um, it really is a, a simple rule set. If you've been playing other rules for a while, then there's a couple of things you need to watch out for, but uh, it won't take you too long to pick these up as well. So um, that's the purpose of today's video. Now, before I get stuck in and, and show you some of the, those rules, uh, let me just ask if, if you have enjoyed any of my videos so far, or if you're enjoying this video, then, um, then please uh, subscribe to my channel. Um, the more subscribers I manage to get, then the, the more I'm gonna be able to keep making these videos. So uh, every subscriber really is important. So if you can do that, that would be fantastic. And thank you very much. Uh, now let's get stuck in. And, and first of all, let, what, what better place to start than the break? The break is played to a four point rule. Now what that means is you get one point for every ball you pop and you get one point for every ball that passes an imaginary center line going from the center pocket to the center pocket. Any ball that passes that into the top half of the day ball, it doesn't have to stay there, is worth a point. Uh, and all you need to do for a legal break is to get four or more points. I've got a couple of examples here I'm gonna show you. Um, the first one being Andy Cragg, and he hits an absolutely fantastic break, really catches them well. You can see he makes a ball to the bottom left corner, therefore he gets a point for that. So then we look at the number of balls that have passed this imaginary center line, and you can see he clearly gets the required, or more than the required number. And there was plenty of balls past that center line in the top half of the table. Excellent break from Andy, that is a legal break, and he gets to play the next shot because he made a ball. Now in our second example, I'm going to look at Jimmy Croxton and he hits a poor break, doesn't catch these anywhere near as well and he actually hits a, an illegal break. You can see he doesn't make a ball and only three balls pass that imaginary centre line and go into the top half of the table and actually come back down as well. But all he gets here is three points, he doesn't get to the required number of four, therefore it's an illegal break and the balls have to be re-racked. Um, and once they're re-racked, his opponent, on this occasion Rob Warren, he will get the opportunity or the choice of whether he puts Jimmy back in to play again or whether he takes the break himself and he gets to break off just like a normal break, essentially he gets an extra break, which most people, Rob did on this occasion, but most people would take that option and get themselves an extra break. Um, so that gives you the basic fundamentals of the break. I think this is a really good rule because it's almost forcing the players to hit the break with power, um, much, much open the frame up and less likely to have a tactical frame. One of the other rules we need to know about from the break is what happens with a standard foul. So potting the cue ball or jumping the cue ball off the table. Uh, got a great example here from Oli Bale where he unfortunately gets uh, kicked into the corner pocket, cue ball goes down, Andy Cragg comes to the table and what he has in this situation is cue ball in hand to be placed anywhere behind the break line and then he just has a standard visit from here, so which is a slight variation from other rule sets, uh, but I think a, a really good variation as well. Let's talk about how color groups are determined. In international eight ball rules, it is the first legal ball potted that decides on the color groups. Now, one thing we need to really factor into this is that you can only pot the color set that you are going for. So if you're attempting to pot a yellow, then you need to pot a yellow to be yellows. What you cannot do is play a yellow onto a red to go reds or vice versa. Now, if you inadvertently pot a red whilst going for a yellow, as we've got in this example from John Sullivan, then it isn't a foul, it is just loss of turn, and your opponent comes to the table with a free table as well. Uh, so it's really, that, the key point there is you have to pot the colour group that you are going for.
One of the biggest, if not the single biggest difference between international eight ball rules and other rule sets that are out there is what happens after a standard foul. In international eight ball rules, if you commit a standard foul, then you are going to be handing your opponent cue ball in hand, but anywhere on the table, but it is just one standard visit. Now, in other rule sets, you might get cue ball, might have the opportunity to play the cue ball from where it is, or place the cue ball behind the line, but you might have a shot on a visit, or you might have two shots. In these rules, that isn't the case. It is one standard visit, but you get to place the cue ball anywhere on the table. Now, I've got a really good example of that happening here in a match between Martin McIntosh and Josh Kane. And as you can see, Martin's just fouled, and the referee's going to hand the cue ball to Josh Kane. He can now place this anywhere on the table. He's on reds. Um, and then, but from that situation, he is, if he misses his first shot on reds, he would just be turning the table back over to Martin. It is just one normal visit from here. Which means you have to be really clever and selective about where you place the cue ball because you're going to want to try and potentially pot your ball and open up your other problem balls in the same shot. So you're looking for that good angle. Um, but it does mean you have to be a little bit more creative. Uh, but this really is a rule that we need to sort of get our heads around because it is probably, for me, the biggest difference between uh, international eight ball rules and other rule sets that are out there. Let's talk about the combination or skill shot as it's more commonly known. In international eight ball rules, you can play a combination shot. Um, for those of you unaware, a combination shot is when you pot your ball, you can pot your opponent's ball in the same shot. It is a perfectly legal shot and then you can continue your visit. Uh, I've got a great example of it here with Gareth Hibbert playing Alex O'Donoghue. Gareth on yellows, taking the yellow to the top left hand corner, sends the cue ball across the table, pots the, the red in the right centre and it's an excellent shot from Gareth and a, a really um, great example of, of the skill shot. Now, in international eight ball rules, the only time a skill shot is not allowed is when you're on the black. So you cannot pot your last ball and the black in the same shot. Got an example coming up here from Martin McIntosh, who is on yellows and he's on his last ball. Now when he pots his last ball, the cue ball flies into the black and the black almost goes into the top pocket. And he's actually very, very fortunate because in, in international eight ball rules, if that black had dropped into the pocket, it would have been loss of frame. But as it happens for Martin on this occasion, it was just about okay. One big difference with international eight ball rules compared to other rule sets is the fact that if you don't make your skill shot, then it is just loss of turn rather than a foul. In fact, in international eight ball rules, you can pot your opponent's ball as long as you fulfill all the other requirements of a legal shot. So as long as you hit your ball first, you can come to the table, you can pot your opponent's ball. You don't have to be attempting a, a combination shot. Uh, you can just use it as a, a tactical shot, a way of clearing a ball from the pocket, if you like. Um, and it is a perfectly legal shot. Your opponent comes to the table and they have to play from where the cue ball finishes. Um, I've got a really good example here of Josh Kane versus Rob Warren. Josh is on the table and he's on yellows and the red is blocking the pocket. Now he makes no attempt to play the skill shot as in make the yellow as well as the red. He is just potting the red over the pocket and leaving the cue ball where it is which actually leaves Rob in a safe position. Um, it's a really good choice of shot. It's a way of opening up pockets and it's a, a really good shot for keeping the frame moving and, and going forward. One of the rules we need to be aware of in international eight ball rules is the fact you have to either pot an object ball or hit a, a cushion after contact with an object ball every single shot. Um, in other rule sets um, where that applies, it doesn't apply when you're totally snookered. Well, that doesn't exist in international eight ball rules. If you're totally snookered, it changes nothing. You still have to either pot a ball or hit a cushion after contact with an object ball. And I've got a great example here in Josh Kane versus Rob Warren. And, and Josh finds himself totally snookered. Um, and rather than just trying to come off one cushion and hit a yellow in this occasion, he has to then hit another cushion or pot a ball. So he has to play it a lot firmer to make sure that he doesn't foul and he actually gets massively fortunate, hits the yellow, hits a cushion, and, and gets really fortunate the way it leaves um, the table. Uh, this is a rule that's um, only a subtle change, but it's definitely a rule that we need to know.
Well, I hope this has helped give you a basic understanding of international eight ball rules. I really believe that uh, these rules are probably the simplest out there, the simplest to understand, especially for a beginner, somebody starting out in the game. I think you can pick these rules up very quickly. Uh, if you are used to other rule sets, then there are a few things that will be different and you're going to need to start to understand and play slightly differently. But uh, once you start playing and once you start watching these rules, then they do come very, very quickly to you. And actually, uh, I think you'll find that they're, they're very enjoyable to play and they're very enjoyable to watch. They've been designed to be attacking. They've been designed that, so that there aren't going to be frames that get you bogged down, which for me is part of the reason why it is so fun to, to watch and to commentate on. Um, so, yeah, give this a go. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video or any of the others on my channel, then please hit my face and subscribe to the channel. We've got plenty more content to come and I'll catch you next time.